Yep. Hold on to that person. Yes. I'm grateful. I'm grateful for her. I'm grateful she was born. Praise God. Thank the Lord. And I'm grateful for the work that the Lord she's allowed the Lord to do in her life. Because we have a choice. And this morning, the Lord gave me a word. And we have a choice in the word that he's given me as well. If you would turn with me to the book of 2 Samuel. Look, I love the Old Testament, y'all. You can see Jesus throughout the whole Bible. Amen. In 2 Samuel chapter 23, starting in verse 8. 2 Samuel chapter 23, starting in verse 8. And we're going to go to verse 12. The title of my message is Defend Your Pea Patch. Some of y'all are like, what in the world is a pea patch? That's okay, I'm going to explain it to you this morning. But the Lord gave me the word, defend your pea patch. Pea patch, like a pea, like a lentil, like a pea. <laughs> These be the names of the mighty men whom David had. The Tetramite that sat in the seat, chief among the captains. The same was Adano the Ezanite. He lift up his spear against 800 whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ammonite, one of three mighty men of David, when they defied the Philistines that were gathered together to battle, the men of Israel were gone away. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord wrought a great victory that day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agai, the Herorite, and the Philistines were gathered together into a troop, where was a piece of ground full of lentils. Full of lentils. And the people fled from the Philistines. The people fled from the Philistines. But yes, yes. he stood. Hallelujah. He stood Hallelujah. in the midst of the ground and defended it and slew the Philistines. And the Lord wrought a great victory. Hallelujah. He Listen, this morning, the Lord wants you to know that we can stand our ground in the midst of the battle this morning. God has given you a promise, and we have to defend it. We have to stand upon it. We can't just sit back and allow the enemy to come in to rob from what God has spoken into our lives, into our families' lives, into our children. Our job this morning to defend 
the land. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. The setting of this story, oh, now I like a good set, and I like to set the stage. <laughs> and Pastor Matt, just so you know, I only got six pages of notes and not 12 this morning, okay? <laughs> I'm not promising y'all anything, though, according to how the spirit moves. So, anyway, chapter 24 <laughs> opens with the last words of King David. So I found that important. David coming to the end of his life, this story, this battle is right in the middle of David's last words. That means that the battles that we are going to face are going to be continuous until the day of his coming or to the day we go to be with him. Yes, yes. That we are He began to reflect on, on his life and what the Lord had done in his life. And when we reflect on something, we think about it, we consider it, we contemplate it, we might study it, we might meditate on it. And David began to meditate on the things that God had done for him and the everlasting covenant that he learned that his God was faithful and true to but not only did he reflect on the covenant and the promise that God had made him, but he also reflected to remind us to say there's still a battle that we need to be engaged in right. as a child of God. Amen. Yes, amen. That's it. You have to constantly be engaged in the fight of faith. Amen. If you turn your back for one minute, here comes the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. And he's coming in like a flood. Yes, he is. But we can raise yes. up a standard by the power. Back. 
worship <clears throat> when you get past your comfort zone and you decide to press in. Yeah. Past the song. Yeah. I don't really like that genre of music. <laughs> God is not concerned with that. <laughs> he is concerned with the position of our heart. Listen, I will sound like a drowning rat singing in the shower <laughs> unto the Lord, and he does not care. Thank God. <laughs> and the glory of God falls in that place. Hallelujah. Because he's concerned with the position yes. of our heart and us worshiping him. Yes. So what am I saying to you? Acquit yourself. He's equipped you, and we have a job to equip ourselves. Hello. Amen. We gotta grow. The law of, the, of sin and death and the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. See right here? Yeah. This is the fight. Yes. The fight is here. <coughs> As we keep our eyes fixed upon the Lord, he takes us from this law. Death. It's a law right. of sin and death. Yeah. And he translates us. Over here to the law of the spirit yes. of life yes. in Christ yes. Jesus yes. that makes yes. you free. free. Yes. But doesn't just make you free once, <coughs> it makes you continuously yes. free. Yes. As you continue to place your faith That's in good. the cross and what Jesus has done, that means He has given you victory, He has given you freedom. Yes. He said, yes. You are forgiven. He said, You are new. All things have passed away. All things become new. Yes. When we begin to fight with faith, we are no longer under the law of sin and death. But we 
God's good. Yes. Hallelujah. And I had a beautiful testimony. Brandon shared and said, <coughs> Brandon, if you don't mind, which you want to tell it anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at felony charges of 10 years. He did two years and a couple months when he was locked up. And they had three years of parole and three years of probation. He owed some money to the court. He had some things that kind of got lax. He couldn't really, he didn't really deal with. So he had to go back to court. When he went back to court, he had been served, he now serving the Lord, living for the Lord. Now y'all know our God fights our battles. Oh, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. So he's serving the Lord. He's living for the Lord. I love the Lord because he likes to wipe things away. He just likes to like, give us a clean slate, clean bill. Oh, yes, Lord. Brennan goes in and he says, you know what? I'm not going to make no excuses. Made excuses all my life. I'm not gonna make no excuses. Everybody else is making excuses about why they're not guilty and why this and that. And you know, I'm gonna settle in my heart that I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna trust God, and I'm just gonna say I'm guilty. I'm just gonna own it. I'm just gonna man up. I'm just gonna own it. So he goes in, and he knows that he's facing being locked up. And the judge asks him, "Did you do?" X, Y, and Z. He says, I'm guilty. Mm. So they slap cuffs on him. Say, okay, you're going to jail. That's what sin does. Right, right. When we say, see, the bottom line is we are guilty. Right, that's right. right. And when we say we're guilty, condemnation, sin, and death come, lock us up, and throw away the key. Mm. Well, I love this because Brendan said, he never lost heart. He never lost faith. He, had, he said he sat there with this mask on because he had to wear a mask. And he was just singing praises. Singing praises. And I just thought about Paul and Silas. Yeah. Singing praises. Yeah. Late yeah. in the midnight hour. See, it was Brennan's midnight hour. And God was about to turn it around. See, he, he owned it. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Yes, I own this, Lord. I am guilty. Yeah, yeah. But God says, okay, I'm about to turn that around. Hallelujah. I'm about to turn that around.
Praying the scripture. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong with praying the scripture, y'all. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to teach you some practical applications. Yeah. Yeah. Some things that is going to get us through the hard times. Right, right. Because look, we can be under the spirit, the law of the spirit, a life in Christ Jesus, but there's still a battle. Yeah. See, you have a position, but there's still our fallen condition. Mm, yeah. That we have to be changed. Yes, you. Yeah. Yes, me. Look in the mirror in the morning and say, it's me. Yeah. Me I have to be changed. Me over. Don't look in the mirror and say, I can't look in the mirror and say, Naya's got to change. <laughs> Pastor Matt's got to change. My mom's got to change. My boss has got to change. <laughs> My sister's got to change. It's all true. My spouse has got to change. No, God... Change me. Yes. Yes. Change me. Yes. God change me. And that's the battle. That's the continual sifting and changing and sanctification process. But it takes a contending. Are you a contender this morning? Yeah. Or are we a coward this morning? Hello. Look, and I'm not, I'm not talking down because look, there's times I've been a coward. Yeah, true. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, I'm ready to wait for the light flag. I'm done. Where am I going? <laughs> Peter said that. Yeah. Yes. He said, where is there to go, Lord? Mm. Yeah. Yes. You have the words of life. Right. Right. Are you going to run if you want to try? Do you know what? Four or five years from now, you'll be right back here. <laughs> Not maybe in this church, but at the feet of Jesus. Yeah, yeah. right. That's yeah. the truth. Right. Yeah. That's right. Can we not go that way? Amen. Can we contend for the faith? Contend to keep our faith anchored in him said fight the good fight of faith and lay hold i love this because i'm talking about defending your pea patch and y'all need to know how to do that yeah. yes. we need to know how to do that one contending for the faith that there's victory freedom healing restoration deliverance peace provision joy freedom found in christ yes. Found when we place our faith in Christ. But then after it says fight, it says lay hold of. That means to seize. That, that word seize means take ownership. Yeah. Yeah. I have ownership over peace in Christ. It is mine. I possess it. I have ownership over joy. And he slew them at one time. 
And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Hadonite, one of three mighty men with David. And they defied the Philistines, and they, listen to this, they were gathered together to battle. Why they gather? To battle. Why should we gather on Sunday morning? To battle. Yeah. Why should yeah. we gather on Wednesday night? Yeah. To battle. Amen. Why should Amen. you get your family in your living room and crack open the word of God yeah. and worship and pray with yeah. your family? Yeah. Yeah. To battle. Amen. Why Amen. do I teach Sunday school? To teach my children. Yeah, my children. My children to battle. Amen. Why yeah. should we teach the three-year-olds and <coughs> worship over them and teach them little scriptures to battle? Yeah. Why yeah. should yeah. I go to work prayed up yeah. in the Holy yeah. Ghost yeah. to yeah. battle? Because yeah. you are on a battlefield yeah. every single day. And if you are a warrior on your own, when we come in the house of God, there should be a battle going on. That's good. And when your alarm is going off in your house, yeah. 
you go press the code <coughs> to shut it down. But it is telling you, beware. Yeah. There's danger. Mm. Yeah. Someone is breaking in mm. to right. your house. My God. You got the Holy Ghost Come on, on the inside yeah. of you yeah. yeah. that can tell you. Yeah. Hold on. Eat 
to strengthen one another. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 Amen. So don't listen to that lie. That lying devil yes. says you don't have to be around the body of Christ. That's a lie. Yes. Yes. Bible says that we have Eleazar, the son of Dodo, mm. the Hananite. One of the three. I might be saying that wrong, <coughs> y'all, but it's D O D O. So it's either do do or do. -do. <laughs> <laughs>